What's up, everybody? This is the Toasty Podcast. My name is Sky. And I'm Matty B. And today we've got a very long and nice episode for you. Juicy. Full of, yeah, just freaking juicy, toasty slices. And like uh, breakfast. It's like freaking breakfast. So guys, if you haven't already, grab your freaking scrambled eggs, grab your waffles, and grab your phone and turn on the Toasty Podcast. Here we are. Today, we're going over the Russian warship that sank. We have updates on that. We have how to handle the disinfo the right way because, you know, obviously, Russia and Ukraine happening right now. It's insane. And uh, Alejandro Mayorkas has a really good way to handle that uh, disinformation with this new disinformation governance board. We're going to talk about that. It sounds creepy, but we talk about it for you. Break it all down, of course. We also have the border crisis being shrugged off by the same dude, Mayorkas, saying that Biden is taking care of it just fine, which we all know is a lie. Yikes. We have the new rover on Mars right now for 2021 when they sent it. It's it's recording sound, and there's a very interesting facts about this. I don't know why I decided to bring it up on the podcast. I just I was really interested in it. I love space. Ooh, we also so, found out there's, a, there's another country on Mars besides the U.S. Which I oh yeah, know. another thing they they're breaking their their entry into there. I, I didn't know that either. You know the the space force, the space race, the the it's fights real. there. It's real. It's all real. Um, you know, Elon struck struck a deal with Twitter. That's another thing we talk about. Of course, we have to touch yep. on it. Everyone's touching on it right now. I had to get. We got to give you guys updates on that. Yep. BlackRock turning into uh, turning uh, every major corporation in America woke. It's them. It's them doing it. Not just the woke employees. Turning the freaking frogs gay. I can't do it. Sorry, I was trying to do a uh, Alex Jones impersonation. <laughs> Didn't work. China and American academics is something else we're going to touch on. And then Matt Walsh versus Amazon. And that's the story today on the Toasty Podcast. Let's get toasty. Let's do it. Welcome back to the Toasty Podcast, guys. Uh, my name's Sky. I'm Matty B. And, uh, you know, it's been a, uh, a weird couple weeks for me. I've been out of town and been out of pocket and stuff like that. But, you know, we're coming back into it. We're coming back into it, and uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad to be here. If this is first if you wow, let me, uh, let me rewind. If this is your first time listening, please like and share the show. Uh, that is the only way we grow. Tell a friend, you know, if you like us, the way we are, our personality, whatever. Because here's the thing. I know there are other shows out there, other podcasts out there doing the exact same thing. I get it. I'm not I'm not blind to the fact that this already exists. I'm not an idiot. I we just do think, it slightly differently and yeah. way better. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. There's do you gotcha. you get a little offshoot on that bad boy? Bam, that's what we are, you know? Right. Some people like We like to just like you know, kind of just veer. It's it's it's, a, it's open. You know. Yeah, not everyone likes milk and toast. Not everyone likes freaking syrup on their yeah. waffle. You know. What about peanut butter? You ever tried that on your waffle? Yeah. It's freaking good. And sometimes we get real savory and go chicken. And which that's is us. Equally amazing. So that's the toasty podcast. Yeah. We get toasty on all politics, society, and culture topics there are. So uh, yeah, that's us. Anyway, dude, what I was saying is, yeah, so sure. my coworker, uh, he. Uh, <laughs> I guess he's my, I don't know what you want to call it. He kind of works with me, kind of doesn't. He's not like a full-time guy where I'm at because I'm the only person where I'm at. I'm, it's me and, and the owner, and that's it. And so and I install radios. If you guys don't know, if you guys haven't listened to our previous episodes, I install radios and headsets for all of the public safety communications um, systems in all of Texas and soon to be Oklahoma. So like... All the fire trucks, the new ones that get ordered, I install all the headsets and radios. That's me. I'm the guy. You could call me a radio sound engineer, but uh, that's too fancy. I'm not really that. It's not really that hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he Technician, told me. Maybe. So we were talking about this thing where I'm actually training right now. I'm studying to be a personal trainer, which I've always loved gyms. I've been in gyms ever since I was freaking like 18, you know, in and out. Just I loved it. I love gyms. Whatever. It doesn't matter. That's why I decided maybe I should do this. And a girl at my gym said, hey, you'd probably be good at it. And she's a personal trainer. So that's why I'm doing it. But all that to say, dude, I don't know what I'm doing in my life, dude. Like I was talking to my coworker, uh, Richard, and he's like, I feel like you're going to be one of these guys that grows up and you've tried everything. And he's like, he didn't say it in a bad way. He didn't say right, yeah. you've grown up and you tried right, everything. And you, but my point is, my problem is, is that I see it as a bad thing. I see it as what if I'm 65 and I'm like, 
still just grinding away at some random job because I've tried literally everything mm. and haven't like really made it to end something. Right. That sucks, man. But then I think about it like this. If you don't take the risk in the first place, right. then you will just end up as a, in a normal life, which not is not bad. A lot of people want that. A lot of people want the normal, like straight up a normal American life. I'm just trying to figure out and get a balance on that, you know? That's all. Right. But I'm trying something new. Personal training. Here we go, you know? Yeah, you never know. I mean, maybe you're going to be like the next big personal trainer in Hell yeah. DFW. I don't even every, know. Every high-end client is going to want to go after this guy, David, personal training. Dude, I'm just saying, if or you guys do, you could be on, hit me up. <laughs> on uh, Instagram or something doing personal training tips. That needs to be done, dude, because like inst- influencers on Instagram are completely wrong. Like, they're not... They're not they're all selling selling this this image that's not real. Like like someone could be shredded to the nines, bro, and they're like in the in the like below ten percent body fat range, but they're getting ready for a competition. Oh, of course you are, and now you're gonna show us who you are, and everyone thinks they have to be that. You can't. That's not right. that's so not good for you at all. First of all, and maybe it's not because of genetics and stuff like that, dude. That's not how you do it. You know, you trust the process, whatever. I don't I don't work out for that kind of thing. I work out because it. It relieves a lot of stress, which is a fact. Scientifically, it does. So, anyway, dude, that's what I was saying, though. I don't know, man. You know? Yeah. Well, how do you see that? How do you view that? Whenever you got into your career, where you just like, I'm doing this because I'm going to provide for my family, and that's about it, right? Uh, partially, I also like what I do. You know? Yeah, I mean, yes, it has its headaches, obviously, but but uh, you know, I like it, and it, it's you know provides what I need it to provide, and uh, there's a lot of good perks and stuff, so. It's not what I'm mm. going to do forever, you know? Yeah. I have yeah. lots of other plans, so. I've got, got three year, three year plan, five year plan, ten year plan. That I guess sort of I guess that's something else. As long as I have a a long term plan, I think that I'll be okay. I won't fall into the trap of like trying all this crap for no yeah, reason. Plus, you're young. You don't have a family. You've got a nice small apartment. You yeah, but I don't want that. it to be like that forever. I well, could be forty years old, and you're like, like "Hey, forever. you're young and you're single." Like, dude, I'm forty now, nah, I'm still doing the same, the same crap. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. You know why it's not gonna happen? Gym crush, bro. Here we go. Oh. So I, I have a gym crush. All begins with a crush, right, bro? I'm just saying, dude. And if she listens to this, I'm screwed. <laughs> but uh, it's not, yeah, right, dude. And I'm not gonna say her name because that'd be weird this on a podcast. Like, I'm gonna marry the gym girl. Dude, she introduced herself to me. So that's what's oh. so weird, you know? That doesn't happen at gyms. All my friends are like, man, you're like a freaking weirdo guy because you're getting all these girls that introduce yourself to me. Because, like, the personal trainer up there, we're friends now, and, like, she introduced herself to me in a way, kind of. So, like, it was just, like, kind of, it was just, what the heck's happening? I always go into gyms. When I work out, it was always headphones on, don't talk to me. I look as mean as possible with my face so that no one talks to me, you know, <laughs> on purpose because I'm trying to work out and that's my time, dude. That's my time. But, uh, this get girl, the, man, okay, yeah, get to the crush. six foot, dude. <laughs> she's six foot. I think she's like taller than me. So I'm like she's five, like seven, six, three in heels, bro. Yeah. But was that weird to you? Yes. Really? Yeah. I, I talked to guys and they're like, I couldn't do it. Is it cause it's intimidating or is it cause it looks weird? What do you think? It's not intimidating. It's just like, uh, it's it's just like a physical fit sort of thing, you know. Like, okay, if you're sitting on the couch watching a movie, you got freaking Amazon woman right next to you. <laughs> like, what do you want to do? I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. She's she's what the Amazon she's woman big. with your she's freaking. Big. She's super freaking. Good. Just, you're, you're, you're not gonna be. Than me. She can slouch, bro. Like, hey, what's up, baby? <laughs> my sweetie, how was your day? Oh, oh was pretty you're automatically sweet. putting a manly voice on her, dude. She does not have a manly voice. I'm defending this chick, and I don't even freaking know her that well. <laughs> this is hilarious. Whatever, dude. So, okay, you're in love with the Amazon woman, what, dude. What, she's not. I'm do? pretty sure she's probably from like Norway or some crap. They're all like tall and blonde, right? Yeah. She's like tall and blonde. So okay. Look, all I'm saying, is, dude. Okay, whatever. All I'm saying is, she introduced herself to me, dude, and that says something. It's like, whoa, this is crazy. And I told her that I'm like, you know, you're you impressed me by introducing yourself to me. That's crazy. And she's like, oh, well, I'm not like other girls. Psh, with her hair, oh. it was a joke, right? But I'm like, oh man, goodness, dang, sparks are Whew. flying already, dude. I'm telling you what, the chemistry. Oh my gosh, 
I felt it. It was a zing, bro. You know those little uh, those little light things we used to have where you touch them and that goes to your hands automatically. That the was, uh, what that was it was called? Her. Tesla's. A Tesla, Tesla fear, coil, but Tesla it's not, coil, but it's yeah. like not dangerous at all. It's not right. the real thing, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> psh, pseudo, you always felt a like a Tesla coil. That's what I felt like, dude. It was like psh, I was like, oh wow. my gosh, I was like taking in the energy, energy, bro. Huh? Yeah, and while That's I was cool. doing that, <laughs> the yeah, personal trainer was looking at us like staring. <laughs> oh man, this is the this is the, the, the yeah. other one. Yeah, other one. Tell yeah. me about. Yeah, That's pretty funny. I, I don't know, man. I was like, whoa. Uh, okay, but I I think we're good. I think she's just like. I don't know, like good friends or whatever. Uh. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know if she listens to this podcast or not, so uh, apologies. Uh, kind of. She I guess. did subscribe on YouTube, which you should subscribe no, on YouTube. No, no, this is the other chick. That's another chick. The girl that freaking hit me up on Facebook randomly. I didn't know you knew, they knew that many girls. Wow. wow. What? Three. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Three. Three? Oh my God. Dude, my problem. Here's I'm sure my... they're all. You know, real too, right? For the girls out there, I want to know your opinion. But here's my thing, dude. I don't always just like make friends that are girls because normally it ends up going one way or the other. You know, we talked about this. Yeah. One, one, I like her or she likes me. That's how it always goes, mm-hmm. no matter what, right? So, what are you doing? Not wasting freaking time. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Screw that, you know? So, it's, it's, uh, it might be mean to say that, but that's just how I've been. No, that's, that's a, I mean, <sighs> it's the same thing with real point. friends, dude. You know, like you don't, you, you get to a point in your life where you're like, wait a second, I'm not necessarily trying to get something out of all my friendships, but I'm also not just going to have a friendship that doesn't do anything at all. Right. You know? You're not going to waste that time. You're looking for meaning, meaningful relationships in your life. Yeah, dude. Touching tips, bro. What are we doing? Dude, okay. <laughs> what I want to know about this personal story, though, is like, what what the heck are you talking? You said pick up slack without bitching, bro. What are you saying? Well, I'm glad you asked, guy. <laughs> no, I'm just like, what? Because I, I was been no, looking so, at this the whole freaking so podcast. This all, happened, this, bro. this all happened today. This is a fresh story. This is a fresh slice of toast. Friend. Oh, hell yeah, so, dude. So uh, this morning, we, we're getting up normal, normal, fairly normal morning, right? And it's like, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm awake a little bit. I, I woke up at about 7. And I'm having my... I'm taking my normal amount of time to do things, right? I'm not going slow. I'm not going fast. It's just normal morning for, for Maddie B. And so, <laughs> uh, I'm getting wise bottle ready, and Sierra, like, jolts awake about 7.30, and she's like, oh, oh my gosh, one of these doctor's appointments at 8 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> oh. You're not dressed. I'm not dressed. Like, I'm, I'm like... Just just made his bottle. Like he's he's eating. He just woke up. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like 20 minutes away. It's 7:30. Like, I guess I'll you know I'll take him. I'll take. That's him. not gonna happen, right? You're like, oh, that's not gonna and happen. So I get I get dressed. I um, Sierra helps get him ready, and we get out the door, and it's like eight o'clock right when we leave. We call the place. You're and, supposed to have work today, right? And yeah, so you're yeah. like, nah, screw that. Yeah, so, you're going in late. Yeah, told him I'm coming late, but I'm I'm have like I have this like horrible attitude. And I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm frustrated, right? Because I wasn't planning on t- on uh, taking him this morning and doing all that stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, of course, it's because change yeah, the plans. And, and it and Jerry had told me about the doctor's appointment, and she she was going to take him and everything like she usually does, and um, she she accidentally slept in. It happens. To the best of us happens all the time. So yeah, and it wasn't even like she slept in all morning. She slept in for like an extra 15, 20 minutes. So um, anyway, um, the point of the story is, I get a bad attitude, right? And I kind of like, I don't, I'm not like, I'm just short with you. I'm not like rude or you know super rude or anything. I'm just like short with her, and I'm like whatever, dude. Um, and the moral of the story is like don't like in a in a relationship in a marriage. I feel like I learned a valuable lesson is like you should really you really should and I say pick up the slack I'm I'm using that pretty loosely but I'm saying like you should it's it's definitely a team effort and you should always pick up the slack and pick up that you know if if your partner or spouse like drops the ball like you gotta pick it up first bounce and not bitch about it or hold it against them or like be like oh remember that time you dropped the ball or remember that or or since you you know failed to do this, like now you've got to do this for me I th- or whatever. I think this is especially or have a bad attitude about it. This is especially important whenever the you have a kid that is old enough to 
uh, watch you guys and take right. influence. That's that's which very is probably true. now, honestly. But yeah, you. I mean, you can't because let's say you know you let yourself get mad and that kid sees that and something like that it's an influence. That is it. Right. They soak in everything, bro. And it. Yep. And that's why you know, like one of the things Jordan Peterson uh, said a long time ago. It's one of his like tactics on how to control that with specifically a marriage. Uh-huh. Um, he would say. Before you're about to do something, you know, how long do you prepare for a vacation? You know, you you prepare for weeks, sometimes months, so long for this seven day of time that's, it's just seven days. But every single day, you don't prepare for your day. You don't prepare for anything that happens in your day. Mm. So he's like, what if you stopped in your car and sat in your car when you got home and just like thought about being good at walking in the door and seeing your wife? For the first time uh-huh. of the day, he's like being like literally think about preparing for something like that, yeah, and how much different that can be. Right. He's like it can change the whole th- the whole marriage. He's like you got all this crap on you from work and everything else. He's right. like you you can walk in and right before you walk in the door, just like take thirty seconds and you're like thinking about how you want to be, right? And then boom, get it, you know? Yeah, how you're so perceived and how that how that perception is going to put your spouse in whatever mood it is going to put them in. Right. Now, what I'll say is, like, for waking up, it's a little bit different. You can't right. necessarily, obviously, sit there and prepare with that kind of a situation. Uh-huh. That all comes beforehand, like you're preparing to sleep. And one of the things I'm learning, because I'm doing this new, it's new to me, and because I'm going to be a personal trainer, so I'm trying to figure out all the health and fitness crap and all the stuff surrounding it. And, you know, sleep is a huge thing, right? Everyone knows it's important, too. But what they don't understand is, is it, it's important – to prepare for that as well. Right. You know, so normally I'm, I'm just like hanging out, not viewing any screens for a while, and the next thing you know, I'm asleep. And that way, when I wake up, I'm in a different state of mind, so it just, it helps. Everything, all that stuff helps. And I, that's definitely a valuable lesson. I'm not married, obviously, but I can definitely see how even a bad attitude all the time, anytime, anytime, you can have a bad attitude, <sighs> but that is controllable, dude. Right, exactly. All controllable. Yeah. That's what's so insane, man. It's insane that we have that much control. You know, it's crazy. It is, yeah. And it's also insane that we also don't have any control at times. Like, right? It, 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 you or, mean, or like, you mean a, like or I should say a lack of control, right? Yeah, like whenever you get like super angry, it's like, whoa, what's happening? I just want to punch this guy in the face. Yeah, well, that... And you have to, you like, have to tell yourself not to. It's and, like, whoa. Yeah, there are, and there are people that allow themselves to lose control is basically how I should have said it. Like oh, there is that, yeah, there's that perfectly right, controlled right, disciplined right, right, person, you know, that, that drill sergeant, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's the opposite end of the stre- spectrum and then everybody in between. And it's kind of, yeah, a, I always like, I think about how like you watch a guy get, get enraged and do something. I always think about what's, what's going on in his head when he's doing that. Right. Cause if I was in a similar situation, I'd be like, I would know what I'm want and I'm about to do. Right. Doesn't he know? And then he'd be done with it, and he's like, I'm so sorry. You're like, what? Why did you? It's so weird to me. Same situation. In the moment, you're like not even just just deciding what you're going to do. It's so weird. Yeah. Anyway, wow. Okay. So. There's that. Yeah, there is that. Jeez, dude. But uh, in the end, uh, to apologize, before anybody said anything, I ordered uh, Tiff's treats for her. So. Really? Yeah. So it was like a big fight. It was no, not at all. Oh, okay. it wasn't even a fight. I don't know. I'm th- I'm used to I like just, tips treats is like a thing, you know. That's special. Oh no, I was just like oh, I felt bad for being like short and was like I'm gonna cut this off the pass and just she can't be mad. Nip this in the bud. But, that's what they say. Yeah. So this first story today, guys. I wanted to re re up this story we talked about last week. Uh, the Ruski worship. Yeah, Russian disinformation, dude. So the thing is, is anyone can fall victim to this. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, uh, and you never know, dude. Here's the deal. We still don't actually know. We still don't actually know what happened to the warship. You know, because we have reports from Russia, obviously, that said it got hit. And then after that, later, some ammunition blew up or whatever. But then Ukraine's like, nah, bro, we hit that crap. It's gonzo. And then... Next thing you know, here's the telling thing. So this article is talking about what do we know, you know, and and basically this article doesn't do crap. It we I read it and it basically ends up saying, well, there's some pictures of billowing smoke from a ship, but it could it may not be the right ship. And you're like, what? Why are you showing me this? And then Russia has a picture, literally a video of uh, their 
their sailors that were on that ship. That's what they said. They said these are the sailors. How do we know? We don't know crap. There's nothing going on that tells us that that was it. Yeah. They're just there. They're just this random people. so weird. So there's nothing really in this article that's telling me anything. And it's not even a Russian article. This is like a, a random article. But the next thing you know, what, what, families so what, wait, are... what article is that from? This is from literally BBC.com. So okay, BBC. Sunken Russian warship, what do we know? And it goes through, and like I said, it basically doesn't really explain much because it's like, is it a fire, like they said, or is it a missile attack? Well, they're, both of these stories are around. They're, they're out. They're going. So something, going. something most likely happened to the ship. We just don't know what. Sure. But here's the problem wow. with that. Here's the problem with that. See, normally it'd be like, okay, who cares? You know, it's just a freaking another Russian attempt to uh, disinform or whatever, or uh-huh. Ukraine ap- attempt to disinform. It could be both sides, whatever. But then you find sailors, families of that ship are seeking answers about Russian, the Russian ship. And this, this is the Associated Press. Yeah. Associated Press is basically saying it took the military over a week to acknowledge that one serviceman died and two dozen others were missing after what? one of its flagship what? cruisers sank in the Black Sea, reportedly the result of a Ukrainian missile strike. The acknowledgement happened after families started searching desperately for their sons, who they said served on the ship and did not come how come home. And relatives are posting sharp, posing sharp, wow, posing sharp questions about Russia's f- initial statement that the entire crew was evacuated. That's what they initially said. Wow. And then a week later, they're like, oh, yeah, one person died, and then the, some others are missing. Yeah, two dozen? That's a pretty big difference. That's a lot of people. In, in evacuation, all of them, and evacuating all of them, not. 27. So it says Russian Russia's defense ministry said Friday in a terse announcement that one crew member died and 27 were left missing after a fire damaged the flagship Moskva. Wow, dude. 300 and then it says 396 were evacuated, that's what it says. They did not offer any explanation for its earlier claims that the full crew got the vessel before it sank. So now here's the deal. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they didn't know the whole story. Maybe they also didn't know the whole story because the ship had just sank. But come on, dude. It's Russia, so I can't really could go Man, both ways here. Yeah, who knows? I mean, of course, Ukraine wants to say they sank it and they did it. That it sank and that they did it. Right. And of course, Russia doesn't want to say, "Oh no, it was just a fire accident." Yeah, of course they do. And Why the would they not? Finally, one person. Yeah, died. yeah. They want they want they want their side to look okay and good. Right. And if it's just wow. a fire that, that sunk the ship, great. And then their people won't be like, holy crap, Ukraine might be doing something to us, right? Right. It's like a way, it's all a perception game. And I I wonder, I want to know what the Russian people think. Like, I really, like, yes, of course, there are Russian moms out here asking about their sons on the ship. But I, I want to know, like, the majority of Russia. Because, you know, I've talked about this with friends and stuff before. Like, do they. And we've also talked about the fact that like they, they don't have the same internet and all that stuff too before. Right. But you know, what are they thinking? Are there are there is it like here? Like is it like fifty four percent against the war and you know forty the, the vast, six? No, the vast for majority it? of Russians are, are for, for it, yeah. right? And that's what I thought too. But I don't know if I can trust polling. I don't know if I can trust anything, dude. I don't know. Yeah, you know. Um, and from from what I'm hearing from from what I've heard from like actual foreign policy experts, um, I think. Ben Shapiro had a had one on his show. I can't remember who she was, but um, she was a former uh, Russian citizen and uh, now works for the. Um, I believe she works for some intelligence agency. I can't remember which one. Um, but anyway, she was saying that yeah, no, the Russian people are very supportive of Vladimir Putin and they're very supportive of the war, and most of them just want to gain that territory, and a lot of them just want that slice of uh ukraine uh the the, the eastern the slice eastern right slice, yeah. yeah the eastern basically you know fifth of ukraine they want all that you know ceded back to russia right because they have a lot of family members there that whole area speaks russian so huh. they think that the whole war is, is worth it really interesting yeah uh yeah i always wonder you know it's just because you we we don't see the real we don't see the real russia you know just like they don't see you know the real america uh-huh. Well, actually, right now, like you could show them America as it is, and they would probably hate us because of what we're doing to them, as far as sanctions and our comments, especially Biden saying he wants to dethrone Putin. You know that kind of stuff doesn't look good. And it also, us doing more for Ukraine and getting more involved in the UK, especially getting more involved in Ukraine as we go on. It's yeah. not just sanctions anymore; it's real shit. You know, 
it's it's troops, literally UK troops going in and tra- training Ukrainians. Right. So you know that's what's happening now, and and that, I mean, we're, that we're, escalates we're, we're quickly. Training, we're training Ukrainians. We're also training Ukrainians, like battalions of Ukrainian right. troops. So like I'm not like so is that a proxy war? I don't know. It seems like it's me. It's getting there. It's really getting to and, that point. And it's heating it, up quite a bit. That's lot, escalation is, we don't we're need, talk, bro. We're talking about it less, and it's escalating more. That's the, that's the really scary part. Is well, that, right? They can because they can just do everything behind the scenes, and we don't even have to know about it now. Yeah, well, Americans are already tired of it, you know, for the most part. So, like, oh, that's kind of old news. It's and still, that, well, that's still going on. I thought that was over. You know, maybe, man, maybe that's the point of the propaganda. It's not just to make us believe something off. It's just to get us desensitized very quickly, right. so that we get over it, and then boom, what do you know? Here we are, exactly a freaking uh, Hunter Biden laptops, you know, like that kind of thing, right? Uh huh. Dumb, dude. Dumb. But uh, moving on, we, we actually have another story. I kind of wanted to talk about um, our border in Texas, where we're, at, where, where we're at on that. And I guess the update is there's no update, in my opinion. It's kind of still the same. Uh-huh. Would you agree? I don't, I don't know for sure. You know, well, I, know, t- t- well, I, know by, uh, I know, you know, Abbott sent all the, sent a ton of the immigrants to yeah, D.C. He, he, yeah, he sent a few buses up there. Publicity um, stunt, or whatever you want to call it. Mostly, yeah. Um, the thing is, too, uh, Biden just re- just uh, allowed Title 40, 42 to expire. That basically the Remain in Mexico policy where we could uh, al- allow, well, we could basically turn people away at the border. Because of right COVID nineteen, quote unquote. And I guess I, I guess I figured I thought there was a federal judge trying to like slow it down, but I guess that didn't happen. Mm-mm. I don't know. I was reading some random article the other day, but anyway. Um, so we have a comment from Mayorkas uh, claims he's claiming that Biden admin has effectively managed the border crisis. I'm just going to play this for us. This is um, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. Yes, correct. I'm, I'm turning this up on our end so that we don't hear the audio as bad on the, on the computer. We inherited a broken and dismantled system that is already under strain. It is not built to manage the current levels and types of migratory flows. Only Congress can fix this. Yet, we have effectively managed an unprecedented number of non-citizens seeking to enter the United States. Only Congress? That was a weird... That was a Didn't, weird uh, wait, what, who, who is that huh. guy that, uh, wait, who is that guy that, that stopped the border wall from being constructed? Wasn't that, oh, the president, that's right. <laughs> How stupid. What a Boom, jerk. Boom, got him. Like, he's just, he's telling, I mean, he's obviously gaslighting. And right, he's, no, he's it's clear gaslighting, bro, and here's the CNN politics uh, freaking report on it. Republican lawmakers slam Homeland Security Secretary over the border. Uh, Department of Homeland Security Secretary faced off Wednesday with Republican members of Congress in a series of high-profile hearings. Republican Repres- Representative uh, McCall of Texas took issue with Mayorkas' assertion that the te- U.S.-Mexico border was well-managed. He said, I would have to say that I've never seen the border more broken. It is not under operational control. It is out of control. That's what uh, McCall said. So, Anyway, guys, that's, that's the update on the border. It's not really uh, any different. And what's interesting to me is that I live in Texas. I live in Fort Worth. And I don't know if I necessarily see the effects of it every day. I don't really. Um, maybe maybe I don't know. I do, and I do like see some people on the street or something. But whatever. That's like small. Apparently, though, this is a big deal for like ranchers down south and things like that. Whenever yeah. they have a lot of people just literally just staying on their land randomly. Um, really weird. Really weird. I don't know why you would want to. You know what? I guess I do. It's America. Why wouldn't you want to? I guess. But I just I, I have trouble like figuring out why you go from a normal home that you've built down like in South America or somewhere. They're not yeah. all from South America. I was gonna say, but it's I mean, not really like, a normal home. It's still it's sti- it. so it's so still it's, a refuge for them. So they're just going from their their home country well, depends, to South America. It totally depends on refuge the to refuge. Right, uh, right. That's true. Most that's true. of them, <clears throat> I would say, like the vast vast majority, probably ninety ninety five percent are, are um, migrating for. Uh, Economic reasons, right? They want more money. They want a better lifestyle. Yeah, of course. Um, and yeah. a lot of it does have to do with crime as well. There's a lot of crime in Central America, uh, which is where they're all coming from. Like they're not crossing the Panama Canal to get here. They're not coming from South America. They're coming from Central America. So right, that's a good point. That's a good um, point. And a lot of them are coming from overseas, 
and then coming up through the southern border because it's so open. Right. <clears throat> and the same thing through the northern border. A lot of a lot of times, if the if they can afford it, they'll fly up to Canada, and then just walk right in from the northern border because it's not monitored, you know, hardly at all. Yeah, in certain areas. Well, um, so the Homeland Security guy is also secretary creating a. Uh, oh yeah, this a is board. This is really creepy. So this is speaking of Russia. This just happened. So yeah, speaking of like disinformation and uh, and uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security, he is creating. Um, this is really creepy. So this is from uh, Daily Wire, Virginia, <laughs> Virginia Cruda. I was going to call it and. <laughs> Josh Hawley uh, called for the immediate dissolution of the just announced. Uh, this is this is real disinformation governance board in a scathing letter directed to Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. Um, in his letter, he basically says you need to basically stop this um, board from uh, from existing. Like you need to shut this crap down. This is ridiculous. This is America. And he said that particularly troubling is your choice to lead the new board. Nina Jankowitz, a supposed quote, quote unquote expert with a long history of partisan attacks. And he, he, uh, Josh Hawley, Senator Hawley posted this on Twitter. So you can read this open letter to, um, Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, and this is Nina, uh, Jankowitz. Um, who's going to lead this committee in 2020. She described president Trump's use of the national guard as, Quote, a sentence I expect to hear from leaders of authoritarian countries, not the presidents of the United States. In 2021, she quoted uh, with praise an article that said, quote, homegrown fascism predated President Donald Trump. Uh, she also said that America is a systemically racist. And in response to revelations about Hunter Biden's laptop, she tweeted that, quote, now this is really sad. Uh, quote, 50 former NATSEC national security officials and five former CIA heads that believe the laptop is a Russian influence op. Trump says, Russia, Russia, Russia. So, yeah. 50, that, that whole 50 former national security officials and five former CIA heads thinking that Hunter Biden's laptop was a Russian disinformation campaign. I mean, obviously that letter was fake and they never, they never uh, referred to their agencies on that, like those five CIA directors never referred back to the CIA to, to say, hey, what do y'all think about this? <laughs> they just said uh, it's a, it was a total political, you know, hit job. So um, also in the letter, um, Senator Hawley states that so the so, and, and Mayorkas is supposed to testify here pretty soon. He said that so that, so that Congress can consider remedial legislation. So basically, they want to pass a law that shuts this down. Please provide the following responses prior to your expected testimony before the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee on May fourth, twenty twenty two. So coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, how will this dis- disinformation board function? And who exactly will it be monitoring? It's going to be monitoring uh, U.S. citizens, mostly conservatives which is going to be really creepy. And it's probably going to monitor a lot of social media and try and shut that down. So really creepy. Uh, what analysis did DHS conduct, if any, to ensure that the disinformation board and its activities comport with the First Amendment? Why did DHS time its announcement of this governance board directly after Mr. Musk's acquisition of Twitter? Who appointed Ms. Jankowitz to head the board as executive director? Were you aware that her, of her history as a partisan of partisan conduct prior to her appointment. Has DHS conferred with any private social media company in the creation or operation of this board? Interesting questions to say the least. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's really weird. It's just an excuse, in my opinion, to uh, you know cut off random people for saying stupid crap on Facebook. So. It's, it's basically a government oversight board of social media is what it's yeah. supposed to be. And and. and, and, and this guy, Created. Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of Mayorkas of Homeland Security, doesn't want to secure the border, doesn't care about his job. He wants to create this board to monitor free speech, essentially, which is really messed up. Well, you know, right after, you know, Elon, I guess, bought Twitter, so he's yeah. like freaking out, right? So right. I was going to say, we can anyway. we can kind of like mention that because I don't know if you even talked very much. We haven't talked about it since he bought well, it. Well, last, so last time, last podcast, guys, we, we uh, gave you the timeline and we where we were at <coughs> in the timeline was the poison pill. And so 
they basically, you know, wrote a poison pill to keep <coughs> Elon from owning more shares. I explained that last on the right. last show, but uh, you know, pretty much the next day, I don't know if it was a couple of days after or what, they threw that out because I guess they realized that the shareholders aren't necessarily going to agree with them. Well, and Elon it's had not actually, in the best interest of well, Elon had actually secured he'd actually secured funding. Well, yeah, and they saw that too. I agree with that. So they were and like, at oh, that point, no, the writing's so, on the wall. He's he's it's a hostile takeover. Or it's well, he had proof that he had the funding, money. and and they can't. They're not. They're legally bound um, as a board of directors on a public company to do what's best for the shareholders financially, strictly financially. Right. And so it doesn't matter why Elon wanted to buy Twitter. If money is there and the shareholders make 20% over what they have... His offer was so good they couldn't refuse it. Yeah, they're not allowed to refuse it legally. Yep, yep. They can't. And uh, it was just interesting to me that they even they even had the, the poison pill created preemptively. I guess, you know... Effort. Well, and I don't know if, it, if that's true that they didn't expect him to actually have the funds because I will say Elon does talk a lot, but... One difference in Elon is that he does put his money where his mouth is. Like he, right. he usually follows through with what he's going to say. You know. So yeah, Elon he, Elon Musk tweeted, uh, "Free speech is the bedrock of a functional democracy, and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated." I also want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots. The, st- the Sorry, defeating the spam bots and authenticating all humans. Yeah, and that's that's awesome. That's great. But what's funny to me is that, which I agree with all those things too. Twitter though seems to be mainly used. I was telling, I was talking to my friend about this, my buddy about this. It seems to be mainly used for the you know elite or professional uh, class. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is, yeah, I have Twitter as well, and I'm not really up there in that that class either. But those are the people that use it the most. And that's why you go to Twitter, because you see politicians and stuff make comments and stuff like that. The active daily users on Twitter are actually less than Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and TikTok, and YouTube. They're less than all of those. Snapchat's actually 115 million users a day more than Twitter. So it's not like it's some social platform that's like better than the others or gets more viewers than the others, but it's only because... You have people like Elon Musk on Twitter. They're not on freaking Instagram posting random like good tw- good stuff. Maybe Elon posts a picture every once in a while. I don't know. But they're not on Facebook saying this stuff. They're not. Elon doesn't get on Facebook and say, "Here's the bedrock of freedom of speech." Right. He gets on Twitter and does that. Just like uh, Trump gets on Twitter and yeah, does that. That's the Just like Biden it. gets on Twitter and does that. And all the elites that you can think of, all the politicians, all the billionaires, all the right. famous whatever, that's what they use. Right. It's so fun. It's another thing that's interesting, though, is that these famous people, these celebrities, don't post but once a quarter maybe, and they have millions of followers. I just think it's, it's interesting that Twitter is the one that we all chose, you know? Well, I'm down for that. I love Twitter. Well, I like the way it exactly, is. Exactly. That's the but, thing is it, it's the it's a very um, – it's a very like meat and potatoes platform. Like, there's not a yeah. lot of like fluff to it. It's yeah, what you, you get want on, to say, you post and it. That's it. You don't have to post pictures. You can just literally say what you want. Yeah. The limited that's, number of that's of, the appeal of of word limited words. Elon's has touched on that. He has li- touched on the fact that there's limited words, and he might change that. He didn't really say that. He kind of touched on the oh yeah, and the limited words. Kind of what he said. But I I kind of like that. Also, the edit button. At first, I was like, "Heck yeah!" And then I was like, "Wait a second, no." I kind of like that there's no edit button. Yeah. I just, I just do. I like the Wild because, West style. Well, no, because here's the thing, dude. I was thinking about this after I listened to Breaking Points, which, by the way, if you guys haven't checked out that show, it's freaking awesome. Uh, Tom was like, "Yeah, but what happens if you know there's a tweet made, it gets tons of traction, and then the guy changes it after the, there's tons of traction? So whenever you look at it, you're ga- gaslit." He said. Right. He said. The reporters and journalists can do that. That can happen. He's a journalist. He's like, I'm a journalist, and they can pull that off. Headlines yeah. do that crap all the time. Of course. They'll change it as it gets better and, and more you know, traction. It's weird, and I'm like, oh, that's a tweet. You're right. You can edit it. You can just delete it and get rid of it all together if you want and do it again, but it won't have the same traction. It's a totally new tweet. Yeah. And he's like, he, when he deletes a tweet, he'll screenshot it, post it up. This is why I deleted it. Boom. Done. Yeah. He's like, yeah, there's just a lot more transparency with the no edit button. Um. So one thing I thought that was pretty interesting, um, 
uh, I think I think Ben Shapiro has a really good take on on the whole Musk buying Twitter. Um, yeah, of course you do. So, of course, yeah. So he wrote an article, Daddy um, Ben. The, so this is this is from his article about um, Elon buying Twitter. Uh, the left's outsized panic over Twitter, sorry, over Musk's takeover is revealing for two reasons. First, it shows that the left always understood Twitter to be a key part of his of its ecosystem. So it's it is the left's creation. It is their safe space, right? A left biased platform designed to obscure its own leanings while propagand- propagandistically pushing a particular political agenda. That's some good uh, good wording. No, no, no. Hold <laughs> on. Uh, what's um, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, f- for years, the left claimed that conservative concerns about Twitter bias were simple paranoia. Now, upon Musk's takeover, the left has broken into spasms of apoplexy. That wouldn't happen if they thought Twitter wasn't their sole pro- uh, property. So basically, he's saying like they're freaking out because they're losing their safe space, right? Yeah, it's not like the right is invading their safe space. It's now it's just no longer their safe space. Yeah, they're losing their freaking ability to cut everyone out like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, he said. Then there's a bigger problem. The left despises both transparency and free speech in the political realm. The left would prefer secret algorithms that con- that conceal shadow banning and bottlenecking. The left per- prefers quote quote unquote equity in speech to freedom of speech. To the left, the potential quote harm of allowing free speech outweighs the value in open debate. Better to ban the Babylon Bee for noting that Leah Thomas is a man than to allow such content to be passed around Twitter, and better never to let anyone know the, the algorithms behind such bans. After all, with transparency comes accountability, and the power is the point. That's why uh, This is why Musk's first moves at Twitter must be to release information about the prior practices of Twitter, so releasing all of the algorithms and all the bottlenecking and what they did in the past to... You know, in shutting down the New York New York Post Hunter Biden laptop story in October of 2020, uh, a sort of truth and Re- reconciliation commission to make any new algorithms far more transparent and to fire employees who object to such practices, of whom there are many, like 98 percent of Twitter employees uh, donated d- to the Democratic Party. That's like a actual t- statistic. Yeah. Um, uh, Musk may be just the man to help restore institutional trust in social media, but that will require him to bulldoze those who helped undermine that trust in the first place. He's basically also saying, like, there should be mass firings at Twitter, for sure. Well, Mass firings. There will have to be, too, by the way, because Elon will, is, is going to owe, like, $1 billion this next year on the loans he got. Mm-hmm. He, he owes that money, and so, like, he's also, he's not necessarily doing it for business alone, obviously, but he will have to do something. And Twitter does not need that many employees. They have like over 500 right now, I think. Yeah. So I agree with all that. I also think, so one thing that happened after he bought it, right? So the night after or whatever was like a bump in, in followers for a lot of conservatives. Yes. Um, but it was also, I didn't see this until today, a decline in followers for like AOC. And people right. Like that. He, she lost 12,000 followers. Mm-hmm. That's all that is a little strange to me, right. considering they haven't done much to change the algorithm. They just put a lock on the on the algorithm. They just put a lock on the algorithm. So what were they doing? Were they doing stuff daily, like daily you uh, employee interventions as well as just the regular algorithm? Because yeah. that was the only thing that. Or another thing is, how would Twitter gain that many yeah, that many people overnight, or lose that many people? Because a lot of leftists were like, "I'm leaving." But I don't. I don't think twelve thousand people. No, left. I don't think that many people left. A lot, I, I, you know, it happens every every time. You know, oh, if my guy loses, I'm moving to Canada, and then they don't. Right? They stay. Just like you know, oh, if Elon takes over Twitter, I'm totally getting off. And none of them. Like, look what Sean King did. That 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 loser race baiter. He was like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving Twitter, and then left. And then two hour, literally two hours later, his account was reactivated. Yeah. And he was like, I wasn't leaving. I was just getting rid of some. Uh, I had to reset my account for... He had one million followers. Yeah, you think whatever. he's actually going to leave? Yeah, of course What's not. What's so awesome about that is I tweeted it immediately when I saw it was deactivated. I was like, uh-huh. he has seven days to reactivate. I just made sure people knew. <laughs> he has seven days. Because I know, you know? It's like... It took it, two hours, dude. Boom! You know, that's what happened. Twitter gives you seven days. They're like, oh, you deactivated, but seven days, you can you can reinstate um, and still keep your followers. So. Alliteration, by the way, is the literary 
Oh, great alliteration. Alliteration. Alliteration, yeah. Alliteration. So propagandistically pushing a particular political agenda. That is like a uh, pickled pepper, whatever. Yes, yeah, like it's Piper it's, picked it's a pickled using pepper. the same beginning. Uh, um, enunciate or whatever you call them. Little, well, hey man, yeah. I want to, I want to. Do you have some more on Twitter? Tweet, nope. tweet. Well, look, dude. Done. I want to get out here to space and talk because. Uh, Oh, you know, speaking of Elon Musk, let's talk about space. Yeah, Boom. space for Second sure. Done. Well, honestly, I think about it. I think about what does he know, you know? And this is something That's we're really apparently finding out right now, but did he already know this existed? Would, would, would that be so crazy? So check this out, guys. If you guys don't keep up with that kind of stuff, which I understand, I don't know why you would. I just love space. If you ever see the studio or in the studio, you'll see astronauts. And uh, my bedroom has a huge astronaut tapestry and... I'm getting more posters coming in the studio, finally getting that set up, and they are all space-related. So I'm just into space, and Interstellar was like my favorite movie. I don't know why. I'm not an astronaut. I don't do anything with NASA. I'm not even close. I don't really feel like it. I'm not the What guy. about uh, Apollo 13? You like that movie? Well, yeah, of course I like that it's movie. It's all right. Movie. <laughs> okay, okay. So in 2021... We launched a new rover, a st- new state-of-the-art rover, and it had been literally decades. It's like the last one we sent was like 1980s. So they sent this rover to Mars. The 80s, no. Whatever. It was a long time ago, <laughs> like dude. Early 2000s. Early 2000s. It might as well have been 1980s, bro. <laughs> so look, 2021, we send this thing, and it has the ability to record sound for the first time ever on any rover, and it did record sound. Now, here's why that's important. When it gets to Mars and it records sounds and sends sends the sounds back to us, we can literally use that audio to determine like atmosphere thicknesses and things like that mm. because we can test the speed of the sound based on reverberations and stuff. What's interesting is they don't even use the environment for this because, you know, like we probably could guess, Mars is super freaking quiet. And according to Science Daily, this article and NASA, they were using basically the lasers that literally says lasers coming out of this freaking this freaking uh, um, rover. Like, what are you talking about? How do you get what what lasers are you talking about? It sounds like uh, it sounds like freaking Star Wars, like infrared scanners. But it basically is saying when it was shooting the rocks with these lasers, it was getting the sound from that. And it was using that to measure um, like speed of sound. Huh. And apparently on Mars, speed of sound is slower. So the researchers show that the speed of sound is right. lower on Mars than on Earth. 240 mil- meters a second as compared that. to 340. So it's 100 <clears throat> meters per second slower on, on uh, Mars. Right. However, Thinner atmosphere. the most surprising thing is that it turns out that there is actually... There are actually two speeds of sound on Mars. Now, to put it in perspective, guys, there are actually two speeds of sound on Earth, too, but it's just not, you can't really tell because it's not that much different. And what I mean is the frequencies are different. So on Mars, there's one for high pitched sounds and one for low frequencies. There's, they're putting that in layman's terms, of course. Sound attenuation is what I was referring to, is greater on Mars than on Earth. So on Earth, of course, bass frequencies travel at a different speed than high frequencies do. That's why you have bass traps and things like that in studios. But on Mars, it's way bigger. The, the difference is way bigger. That's interesting to me. And basically what they're saying is, imagine trying to talk to someone five meters apart. and You wouldn't be able to do it on Mars because it would be so, like, so off. All the speeds of sounds would be so off, you wouldn't be able to do it. So after one year on this mission, five hours of recordings get made it to Earth, and uh, I don't know, man. I just thought that was pretty cool. But the reason that I'm like even bringing this up is obviously Elon as well. I wanted to know. I want to know like what he knows about this kind of stuff. If he just knows this stuff automatically because he's a freaking genius, or if like you know he's just his company does all this crap for him. He doesn't worry about it. You know, that's just some random thing I think about. That's a good question. And these are the things that I freaking fall asleep to. You know. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if he uh, <clears throat> yeah if he knows those kind of like little details or if he's more of like a a really big picture guy. But he's not because he really literally was chief engineer of SpaceX. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He's he definitely not some guy. He is. He's definitely doing it. But check this out. I want to read this this one sentence. Um, it gets it from the yeah sounds generated by the rover itself, including the shock waves produced by the supercam laser. 
on rocks. What the hell is a super cam laser, bro? That sounds legit. That one. sounds like freaking, like I said, like a freaking lightsaber. So you know it's kind of creepy. Jeez, dude. I was like, you got me all interested in uh, Martian rovers. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six rovers on Mars. Okay. Only five are from the United States. Well, well okay, only five? Damn, we have a big monopoly well, on I've, rovers. I, 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 <laughs> I thought... I thought only the United States had landed on Mars. Turns out the Chinese have landed on Mars as well. In 2021, they landed on Mars, and their um, uh, Zhurong, Zhurong? Yeah, see, I was going to guess that name. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, that's their rover. We've got cool ones like Curiosity and Perseverance. So those two are the ones that are still up there. So <clears throat> China, huh? Just a brief timeline. In, China. Yeah, China. Uh, Sojourner, um, that was, it landed successfully on July 4th, 1997. Communications were lost September 27th, 1997. Yeah, that's the last one, right? So it only went 330 feet. So late 90s. That was, no, that was the first one. Um, and then, Hmm. and then in 2000, uh, so Spirit and Opportunity were both launched, um, in 2003. And they both did great. Uh, opportunity lasted for like, geez, opportunity lasted forever. Uh, These all sound like they could be stripper fif- names. 15 years. Yeah, 15 years is how long opportunity lasted. It was supposed to last like two or three. Now on stage, opportunity. <laughs> Give it up for opportunity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give it up for curiosity. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> oh my gosh. So curiosity had a star um, into it. Curiosity star. <laughs> creepy. Sorry. Anyway. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> it, it launched in 2011 and it's still going. Still operational as of April 2022. Yeah. Um, and then we just launched Perseverance uh, not too long ago. That's the one you, you were talking about. The space lasers. Literally space lasers. So. Perseverance. Dude, okay, anyway, screw all that crap. So look, check this out. China and America. Speaking of China, though, on the rover thing. Yes. So, and, and honestly, and rovers too, because it has to do with academics. Oh, yeah. But what are we doing here? Are you trying to give us like the com- competition right now? Like who's ahead in academics? No, not at all. So um, hmm, hmm, yes. it's really, really creepy. And I mentioned it before on the show uh, when we talked about China, the many times we've talked about China, is their, their, their student foreign exchange program. Um, oh, they're all like freaking spies. Well, a lot, a huge number of them, not, not, necess- not necessarily are spies, but... Because they don't need students to be spies, they can just they, they literally just paid a uh, a Harvard professor fifty thousand dollars a month to spy for the Chinese government, and he you know he did for years and was just arrested. We'd mentioned it a few podcasts ago, actually. Um, but the number of foreign exchange students, uh, this is by Statista, number of international students studying in the United States in 2020-2021 by country of origin. Uh, China is by far and away the number one country for students to study here. And when the Chinese send their you know, students to study here, they don't. The Chinese government doesn't just allow people to leave their country to go study in America. The la- the last thing that they want is a student, an educated, uh, so a, a young, you know, student age population educated in Western. Education and Western culture, of course, because that's they, the last thing Chinese communists want. You know, right. they, yeah, so yeah. when they send people over, they are sending people that are very loyal. They are sending people that are forcibly loyal, if you know what I mean. That like when they send, <clears throat> so a foreign exchange student from China, they would their family most likely would have connections to the Chinese government in the first place. You know, they'd be a high, high, higher up family, a recognized family. Secondly, that student knows. That if they defected, if they crossed the line in any way... Their family way, is gone. Their yep. family's done. Family has disappeared overnight. Because it's like a instantly. mob. <clears throat> Absolutely. The second highest, uh, there's really no surprise, India. Um, they just have a huge population. So does China. But China's population is about the same size as India's. Yet China uh, has 317,000 foreign exchange students in America Uh for the 2020-2021 school year. India has about half that. 
167,000. Uh, way, 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 way less than that. At only 39,000 is South Korea and then Canada, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Taiwan, Brazil, etc. <clears throat> Which is really... So it's a lot of non-Western countries. but And that's fine. But China is the biggest one I worry about. Um, and I've kind of... I think I've said it before... And I'll definitely say it again is I don't think that we should have a foreign exchange, uh, a student foreign exchange uh, cooperation with China. I don't. Not until they <clears throat> not until they totally stop stealing intellectual property, not until they um, start to at least clamp down on human rights abuses. Um, I think there's too much at stake. They're too adversarial. And there's, we're giving away way too much. There's a reason that America has uh, a huge need for engineers and doctors right now. There's a huge shortage of engineers and doctors and um, and that sort of thing. So hmm. it's because we're, Interesting. we're educating them and then they're just going right back to their home country. Right, right. Yeah, on the All In <laughs> podcast that you were talking about, like... A while back, they were talking about uh, how would you handle it if you were going to do business with China. Right. And one of the guys was like, well, look, if you feel the same way I do, you just you don't do business with dictator countries mm-hmm. at all if you feel that way. And uh, I was like, dang, dude. He's like, so, you know, unless you figure out some way to contractually do it correctly— He's like, but there's not really any way you can. You just say, no, sorry, I don't agree with your the way you do things, um, and see you later, bye. Um, and I agree to an extent. You know, China attacks us more than more than Russia was affecting us at all. And we, oh, absolutely. We did, we did tons of, we basically canceled Russia out well, of the world. Remember that when we so, talked about the, the GDP of Russia is like one and a half trillion dollars, which is like less than the GDP of California. Right. And then the GDP of China is like thirteen trillion. It's like ten times that of Russia. So they have they've got the population, the money, and the the productivity to to spend on it. So yeah, yeah, and I and, think and, that and you're China's, right. I kind of agree. Maybe we should just try. China's. Yeah, I definitely think we. I thought about it a long time. I'm like, yeah, we should definitely ban Chinese students from this country for sure. I just wonder if you know we're having a lot of issues with supply chain right now because of China. And yeah, whose fault is that? <laughs> It's our fault completely. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I agree with you, but it would take so long. Like, let's say we started the day, you know, and Trump was in office or, well, something, the thing or someone is, like that, we and could, they want to do that eight years could, down the line. Then we would have to be able to say, we, okay, what, we can't. What we have failed to do over the last 50 years is establish real, and this is why, this is honestly why I voted for Marco Rubio in the 2020 or 2016 primaries, is because. And he mentioned this, and I was like, he's got the best foreign policy of any candidate for sure. Is that we really need to pay attention to our own hemisphere? the The median income in South America is like eleven thousand dollars. You don't think they'd be happy to make, you know, textiles for us? They would absolutely, and it'd be way cheaper to ship that by land or by sea off the same hemisphere rather than. Ha- literally half a world away from China. Well, so I'll say this: you know, the T-shirts we get for the podcast are uh, materials from the USA made in Nicaragua. So, right. Shout out, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> Central America. Hell if yeah. you guys want to buy T-shirts and merch, you can toast to liberty dot com. So, yeah, exactly. Um, I think I think it'd be I think That's it's a idea. huge missed opportunity. Is we could develop those relations. We could have a whole Western Hemisphere alliance, right? And it's just, a, I feel like it's a huge wasted opportunity. Um, so, well, we're in the late game of risk right now. So, yeah. And, and, and another, another real quick point about China and the education system is it's also like a, the, the money is, is easily there. I mean, China donates to, um, all sorts of academic institutions and all sorts of politicians in America by proxy, of course. It's not just straight from the CCP, but it's it's by proxy. And, of course, they're, they're funding Democrats like Joe Biden, who's in the pocket of the teachers' union. So it's, it's big education is all, you know, it's all sure is. tied together, really. So. Heck, yeah, dude. Well, hey, let's, uh, let's continue on here. Um, we can yeah. go on, move on to the 
to the uh, next story you have for us, Brother Bear, Black Rock, turning the freaking frogs gay. So, yeah, it's an Alex Jones reference there. But, of course. Yeah, so, of course. Oh, man, the turn. Oh, I can't even do it. Black. I'm not even going to try to do it. <laughs> I can't even I can't freaking try. Right uh, man, I, I need to, like, work on that crap. I need to, like, get good at impressions, bro. That'd be good. Yeah. I'll Alex, just, Alex I'll just record him and have a button here. Very rocky voice. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's like she smoked a long time and, she, you know, he didn't, I guess. I don't know if he did, actually. I have no idea, but. Doesn't matter. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep moving on. Moving on. Um, so, what I mean by that, which was just, uh, I was just in the show notes about turning the freaking frogs gay, is that BlackRock as an institution is behind a lot of the wokeness that you're seeing in uh, corporations like Disney and mm-hmm. uh I guess other large corporations because they own about twenty percent. They're a huge, so they own ten trillion dollars in in assets. They manage yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Larry Fink manages it. He's been a lifelong Democrat. He uh, and, and BlackRock they, they they own about you know twenty percent of every large corporation in the Dow Jones and yep. S&P. And they are ve- they are pushing the woke agenda. It's not just like thirty Disney employees, you know, right. with you know, woke agenda uh, that are that are manifesting the whole company, this this two hundred you know billion dollar company to change their whole, um, I guess political dynamic, right? So, uh, you know, that's not what's happening. It's it's BlackRock and it's Larry Fink and it's these financial firms and equity firms that are pushing. Uh, corporations to the left. So, yep. um, he's, and of course, universities and uh, big education are totally in this loop and in this cycle. Um, he's, Fink serves on the board of trustees for New York University, NYU. He also co chairs NYU Medical Center, uh, Boys and Girls Club of New York, and the Robin Hood Foundation. So, he's very involved in New York politics. Um, he, <laughs> it's important to note, though, I think that he is also the reason that people like him are pushing to the left for, for corporations is for stakeholder capitalism. And that's the WF, WEF like idea that they can let governments be kind of like shareholders in a total government, a uh, total world government. Right, and so that's what they that's what they kind of want to happen in the first place. So they've said it; they've literally said this stuff. Yeah, and there, a lot of a lot of people are, you know, there's I've heard I can't remember where I heard it, but um, I've heard that BlackRock is the you know fourth or sometimes fifth branch of government. If you count the, oh bro, if you, if you count yeah. the deep state as the fourth, then BlackRock is the fifth, right? I would yeah, and I say yeah, right. If you so this is something that they talk about that Peter talks about in his book, uh, Dave Davos Man, because he literally mentions Larry Fink and all these things because he's obviously part of BlackRock mm-hmm. and this is a big deal. And they go to the WF, they go to these Davos meetings, they're all in cahoots or whatever, and it's just like what the heck? And they have very close ties to all governments on purpose so they can right. sway elections the way they need to and all that, right? Like Macron and. Uh, France. So anyway, right. lots of stuff, dude. Um, in Germany was just tied to the 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 government of Germany was just tied to um trying to sway American companies to uh the woke agenda as well, which is really just super weird. Um, and then so yeah, in in a 2020 open letter. Uh, I think announced environmental sustainability as a core goal for BlackRock's future investment decisions. Um, in the letter, he explained how climate will become a driver in economics, affecting all aspects of the economy. He also divulged in a separate letter to investors that BlackRock will be cutting its ties with previous investments in- involving thermal coal and other investments that have a large environmental risk. So... Wow. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole green energy, green new deal. I mean, if if BlackRock and ten trillion dollars of assets are behind that, it's gonna get pushed and it's gonna go. It's gonna get <clears throat> a lot of good uh, mainstream media coverage. Let's just say, and it's gonna get pushed in academics as well. Oh yeah, no, all this stuff. Yeah, the and the thing is, if if the if the government is saying, oh, we want to push green energy, 
And then a scientist says, well, I want a grant for, you know, $50,000 to do my research. Okay, Mr. Scientist, well, what is your research about? Well, it's about how global warming isn't real. Grant denied. What, okay, Mr. Scientist, what is your what is your research about? Well, mine's about how global warming uh, is totally real, and it's a really super uh, racist thing that's happening in systemic racism, climate change. Uh, grant approved, done. Yeah, right. That's right. that's. I mean, that's what we're. That's well, that's the cycle that's been happening over the last twenty, thirty years. The pro the problem is I can't necessarily say that global warming isn't real, but I also can't say saying, that I know you're not. I can't say that their extreme idea of it's real either. It's not, and it's not racist. That's not even a thing. Right. Well, but they do that. They totally do that. Right. It's like the impact of climate change. These has, buzzwords, dude, has, just, has a bigger impact on on minorities than it does on. Like that was an actual study. Yeah, yeah, but you just that attach was, sure, these buzzwords. Or subsidized by the government. Yes, dude. Yeah, like I need a grant. Systemic racism, you got it. It's Done. like what? Yep. That's so weird. You know the way that works right now. You know it's it's like a, it's a race hustle, man. That's what it yep. is. It is it, the same thing. Dude. It's a climate hustle. Climate the hustle. Thing is, yeah, climate We're making change, money from this crap. Climate like, you change. You guys need to see this. Right, and climate change is real. It's happening. It's happening very slowly, like one degree over the next hundred years. Every time you watch some viral video of some guy going off about some racist thing that's not really racist. You are literally providing him with some sort of publicity. He is probably making money from that, right? And I was not gonna, from you watching. I was going to say, but, you know, the, in turn. The thing is, they want to call it like a. They they said it's it's climate change, then a climate uh, catastrophe. Now it's like climate emergency. Like it's getting more urgent because things aren't happening. People aren't scared of it because they right. know that nothing is actually changing. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. So well, all right, dude. It's so just, it's just silly, dude. Last thing, last last but not least, uh, Matt Walsh versus Amazon. So what this is this? this is really funny. So Matt Walsh, uh, I was just watching his his show that came out today, and oh my, it's so dude. Isn't he a Daily Wire guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, he is right. Okay, cool. Um, he just came out with a he came out with a book a few weeks ago called Johnny the Walrus. It's a kid's book about how this kid wants to be a walrus, and um, he he gets indulged for a while. It's basically like a an anti-transgender book right and anti-transing the kids i should say more than anything and how you basically can't be things that you're not um, and you should be happy being yourself right that's the main message of the book is you should be comfortable in your own skin you should be happy being yourself uh, etc so this book was the best-selling children's book on amazon uh just recently <clears throat> amazon removed it from being a children's book they moved it to a political commentary book, which is political commentary in itself, if you think about it, because it's like all this book says is you should be comfortable in your own skin. And if you if you think there's a political uh, message behind interesting, it, then yeah. you're making it a political book, and it's really just a kid's book, right? Huh. And there's other kids' books on Amazon, like Ibram X. Kennedy's book. That's oh. not a... That's a kid... That's, that's in children's book, and it's obviously not a kid's book. It's a political book, right? Yeah, it's not even close to a kid's so, book, actually. So Matt Walsh, it has another book coming out. He just he just did a re-release a of of Johnny the Walrus, and uh, Sierra, of course, already ordered it. Um, but because uh, <laughs> she loves Matt Walsh too, he's he's really he's he's fantastic. He's really um, hilarious. So, he's pretty good. Yeah. So he's like the, he's probably the best troll on the on the internet. Like it's like it's like him and then Trump, like right behind. Ah, uh, Michael Malice is up there, brother. Dude, so but listen, a different to this. type of troll. He's he's, yeah. he's trolling Amazon though. Yeah, I like he's it. going big, and uh, so uh, there's these videos on, on on from libs of TikTok about how Matt Walsh, uh, how Amazon is freaking out about Matt Walsh's book, and it's triggering people and stuff, and it's just it's hilarious to watch. Oh my this. gosh, the guy, the, guy lead, the, the the quote unquote man leading the. Uh, uh, like team meeting on Amazon literally cries in the meeting and it's it's priceless. It's so funny. So uh, to anyways to troll Amazon, <clears throat> Matt Walsh has another book coming out uh, called uh, What Is a Woman? Um, one man's journey to um, answer the question of a generation or something like that. It's a really funny like title like that. <laughs> and dude, he put he put this book for sale. They they they. Change the classification to a biology book. Because it's what is a woman? What is a woman? And it is about biology. It's a biological question. And it, of course, shot to number one. 
So he had the number one biology book and the number one children's book. So now he's going to be like, oh, I was the number as 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 a best selling bi- uh, uh, biology biology t- author. Yeah, Jeez, what the heck? Uh, textbook author, right? Yeah. Um, it's hilarious. And, oh and gosh, the, the, they're going to freak out about that, and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's obviously not biology, it's political commentary, and they're going to move it over. And yeah, It's just funny because they, the less freak out, like the same thing with Twitter, it just reveals so much about them and how they, they, they you cannot hold a mirror to a leftist because it will break and it will shatter they, their whole world of you. Like, I know, we always do doesn't this. doesn't stand just, any scrutiny whatsoever. By this point, dude... The thing we thing don't need them to show us who they really are. No, <laughs> We've we, already seen it. No, the thing is, time time we again. do because because now pe- people that have never been involved in politics, I get told all the time, "Oh, Matt, you got me involved in politics," and I'm like, "Sorry," <laughs> but yeah, but a lot of times, yeah, like, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times they go from from not being very political, not being you know, very informed, like, "Oh, I like that guy. I think I vote for him." You know, it's like I you, people vote for the beer that uh, people vote for the person they'd rather have a beer with than actually look at their policies and Obama wins that contest over John McCain, you know, easy and over Mitt Romney, even easier. So, well, they were all in the same freaking group anyway. Yeah. Right. Of like, course. Yeah. They're, they're all, all that's you're, all, you're not voting for a different establishment. Candidate. Yeah. Um, but I understand what you're saying. And now they're, they're watching these guys and right. they know who they are and they're informed. You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take being, at all entranced in it like we are all the freaking time 24 right. 7 you just have to it watch a couple takes... lips of tiktok and go wow that's what and the Bro, thing is that's not that far from mainstream democratic party it's not that well far. no because it's them you're just watching them and if you go like there are some democrats that i know of that are probably more sensible human beings like literally the guy we're gonna have on our show or right. you know uh, now probably considered independent, uh, Glenn Greenwald. You know, these people yeah. are reasonable Democrats. They're being kicked out of their own party, though. But you can go to Ground News and get a few articles, literally take two minutes out of your day, read a few headlines, maybe read one article or two actually all the way through to get your basic level of information you need to make informed decisions especially when an election is happening because everyone's reporting on that crap. Pretty easy to do. And I think we should do that. I think as an, as a country, we should do that. But here's the thing, too. It's even easier now with podcasts like this one. You can literally just turn it on and tune out a little bit and get your little, little tidbits you need or go to freaking get sound bites somewhere. You know, it's just it's everywhere now. And I think there's not an excuse today to not necessarily be informed. Right. You don't have to be <clears throat> passionate about it. You just be informed. Like if I say, right. "Have you heard about this?" You say, "Yeah, sure." Maybe you're not into it, but maybe you've heard about it. Right. That's all it is. Yeah. If you've heard about Will Smith, then maybe you should have heard about freaking new Biden policies that do this or that. You know. Right. So. Yeah, keep an eye on the people that uh, are controlling your life. Yes, right? dude. And yeah, taking, for sure. And taking a third of your you know income from your paycheck every. Every paycheck. Yeah, yeah. What so, are they doing with that money? You know? Right, right. That's what you got to pay attention to. Well, we're coming up on the end of our show, guys. It's been a long one. We're trying to. I'm trying to get better at our timing, so it's not just freaking hour and forty. It's just hour. I want to be hour or less if I can. This one's probably about an hour fifteen, but hey, that's okay. Uh, we actually put a clock in the studio for us, so <laughs> so now we can watch that. Mostly and know for what the Sky because he likes to just talk and talk. Bro, you're telling me, dude. Now you're right, though. I agree. <laughs> I just kidding. I can't <laughs> stop, dude. It's like blah blah blah. Anyway, dude. If you like our show, please like, share, and subscribe. And if main one being share, obviously, you can follow this podcast on Instagram, Facebook, um, and you can follow us individually on Twitter if you'd like. We are also on TikTok. We're on everything. Oh, YouTube. Sorry. We're on everything. Yes. Literally everything. Search Toasty Podcast. You'll find us. We'll be there. We're now doing video again. Thank goodness. We will be live coming up probably in a few weeks. Facebook and, Live, uh, right? Facebook Live. Yeah, yes. we're going to go Facebook Live. And we want to get to, by the end of this year, by the end of 2022, we want to get to 500 subscribers on YouTube. Is that what we want to do? Yeah. 500 on YouTube? Yeah. Bro, for real. we have 82 subscribers right now, guys. Well, we hey, need more, but I just, Let's go. I just don't like... I'm not a YouTube guy necessarily, but I am realizing well, it's necessary. Well, we need to get on it. So. No, it's necessary. I totally agree with yes. you, again. All these podcasts I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not YouTube. a big tech guy, but hey, we got to gotta play the game, so we're doing it. That's a good point. Yeah. I had to like literally... like freaking force matt to get on the show all right guys that's it hope you loved it stay toasty stay toasty everybody
Toasty.